This is lesson 2-5, properties of numbers. Now there's a lot of properties here, and I know they can be a bit confusing, so I'll try to explain them in the best way possible. Make sure you copy these down, and then you might want to look at the examples and copy the examples down as I go along. The commutative property of addition means the order of addition does not matter. Commutative comes from the word commute. How I commute to work doesn't matter, as long as I get here on time. I can go drive all the way through Seattle if I wanted to, all the way down through Tacoma, and then all the way back up. As long as I get here on time, I don't think Mr. Schwinney cares how I get to work. Essentially, that means that the order of which you add something doesn't matter. 2 plus 3 is the same thing as saying 3 plus 2. You'll still get 5. The commutative property of multiplication is essentially the same thing, but with multiplication. The order of multiplication does not matter. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. The answer is still 6. The associative property of addition says how you group addition doesn't matter. Associative comes from the root word associate. Who you associate with is your group of friends. You may associate with people entirely different at home than you do with at school or at church. Your group of friends is who you associate with, and how do we group things in mathematics? We put them in parentheses. So the associative property of addition says that we could say 2 plus 3 plus 5, and we could put parentheses around the 2 plus 3, and that's going to be the same thing as saying 2 plus 3 plus 5, except we put the parentheses around the 3 plus 5. Notice the order stays the same, but the numbers within the parentheses change. Same thing happens with multiplication. We can say 2 times 3 times 5 is the same as 2 times 3 times 5. In the first half of the problem, we can multiply 2 times 3 first. And in the second half of the problem, we can multiply 2 times 3 times 5 first. If I was doing it, I'd multiply 2 times 5 first because it makes 10 and it's easier to multiply. That's the point of these properties. You can make your mathematics a lot easier if you know how to manipulate the numbers. The identity property of addition says that adding 0 to a number does not change the number. In other words, 3 plus 0 is still 3. <coughs> Excuse me. x plus 0 is still x. Adding 0 to a number does not change it. It keeps, it, it keeps its identity. It doesn't change it. It's like me. Putting on glasses does not change my identity. It changes my appearance, but it does not change who I really am. Multiplication property of of identity says that multiplying by 1 doesn't change our number. So in other words, 3 times 1 is still 3, or n times 1 is still n. If you multiply anything by 1, it doesn't change the original problem. The inverse property of addition says a number and its inverse added together equals 0. So in other words, negative 3 plus 3 equals 0. n plus negative n equals 0. A number and its additive inverse, or a number and its opposite added together, equals 0. The inverse property of multiplication says a number times its reciprocal equals 1. 6 over 1 times 1 over 6 equals 1. Negative 3 fifths times negative 5 thirds equals 1. Notice, if a number is positive, its reciprocal is positive. If a number is negative, its reciprocal is negative within the multiplication property, of the inverse multiplication property. The symmetric property says if A equals B, then B equals A. And this one sometimes is hard for people to understand. They just don't understand if it says, if basically it says 2 times 3 equals 6. If 2 times 3 equals 6, then 6 has to equal 2 times 3. That's basically all it's saying. You can change where the equal sign is, they're still equal. If A equals B, if 2 times 3 equals 6, then B, 6, equals 2 times 3. The distributive property is the one we talked about last lesson, which says you can multiply and then add, or you can add and then multiply. And of course, fraction is the same thing. So the distributive property says I can take 2 and 3 plus 5, I can say I can do this by saying 2 times 3 plus 2 times 5, or I can say 2, parentheses, 3 plus 5, and I can add these first and get 2 times 8. Either
either way, I should get 16. This is 6 plus 10 is 16, and 8 times 2 is 16. The multiplication property of 0 says that any number times 0 is 0, no matter what the number is. If I have 3 and I multiply it by 0, I get 0. If I have negative 1 and I multiply it by 0, I still get 0. If I have Q and I multiply it by 0, I get 0. The multiplication property of negative 1 says multiplying, up, multiplying a number by negative 1 makes it its opposite. The multiplication property of negative 1 says, hey, if I want to make something opposite, multiply it by negative 1. So if I have 3 and I multiply it by negative 1, it equals negative 3. These two numbers are opposites. Now, with most of these properties, what we are trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we can identify them. We can determine what something is by looking at it. So we can name the property illustrated. If we look at this first example, 3 times a equals a times 3. There are no parentheses, so we know it can't be the associative property. So let's look at it. We didn't change anything that's grouped, because there is nothing grouped. Did we change the order? We had 3 and then a, and now we have a and then 3. Yeah, we changed the order. So we change the order so it's the commutative property. And because it's multiplication, it's the commutative property of multiplication. And you can, you can abbreviate some things. Please don't commute, abbreviate commutative property. Number two says 1 times m equals m. We multiplied something by 1. We did not change the answer. It stayed as m. So this is your multiplicative identity or your identity property of multiplication. That one you can abbreviate because I understand what ID means. If you look at number three, we have in negative three plus four, that's in parentheses, plus five, equals three, negative three, excuse me, plus parentheses, four plus five. If we look at it, the order still stays negative three, four, five, negative three, four, five. But we did change what was in the parentheses. If you look here, the negative three plus four is in parentheses, and in here, four plus five is in parentheses. So we changed what was in the parentheses. So this would be the associative property. And you can abbreviate that. And since it is of addition, we say the associated property of addition. If we look at number four, we have n times p equals p times n. We've changed the order. n came first on the, on the left-hand side. p comes first on the right-hand side. So again, it's the commutative property. How they got there doesn't really matter. So this is the commutative property. And it's multiplication because n times p is multiplication. If you can look at a property and determine what it is, you'll be able to use them much more readily. Now, that's with all these different things with numbers. Now, let's look at a few problems that have more numbers than anything else. If we look at number 5, you'll notice we have 3 times 8 times 0 equals 3 times 8 times 0. Right? At first glance, you might say, oh, it's the multiplicative property of zero because anything times zero is zero. But not really, because it didn't say three times zero equals zero. That would be the multiplication property of zero. This shows you that we have different numbers inside the parentheses. Since we changed the numbers that were inside the parentheses, this is the associative property. And since it was multiplication, it's of multiplication. And yes, you have to put every time whether it's multiplication or addition. Number six, two plus zero equals two. Aha, notice we had a zero on the left-hand side. We don't have a zero on the right-hand side. So that has to be the additive identity. Or the identity property of addition. It doesn't really matter how you say that. If we look at number seven, six plus negative six equals zero. Hmm, a number and its opposite equals zero. That has got to be the inverse of addition, because we're adding. So this is the inverse property of addition. And last but not least, we have 5 plus 4 equals 4 plus 5. There are no parentheses, there are no zeros, we didn't multiply anything by 1, but we didn't change the order, so it's the commutative property of addition. The 
next thing we need to do is apply this. Let's say we go to buy a shirt for $14.95 and a pair of pants for $21.95 and a pair of shoes for $25.15. We want to find the total amount we spent. Now we could just add it up as we see it, but it would be a whole lot easier if we grouped certain numbers that were easier to add. For example, I'm looking at this problem going, I know for a fact that I can add $14.85 and $25.15 pretty easily because $0.85 cents and $0.15 cents equals a dollar. So if I was going to do this problem, I would group up 1485 plus 2515 together before I added the 2195. Because it would make my addition so much more simple. So if I look at this, this becomes a dollar and 25, and basically if I just take this and add the, the, the dollar to the 14 and make it 15, 25 and 15 is 40. So I now have 40 plus 2195, which is 61.95. And that was much easier to add up than making a column off to the right and adding all three numbers up simultaneously. Down here at the bottom here, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to show what we're going to put together. For example, if I was to do this problem, 47 plus 39 plus 3 plus 11, I would want to tell people what I'm going to add up together. So I'm going to group the 47 plus 3 because that's easy to add up. And I'm going to add up the 39 plus 11, because that also is easy to add. This becomes 50. This becomes 50. And 50 plus 50 is 100. Very simple, quick addition. This is what most people who can do what they call the adding in their head. That's what most people that add in their head do, is they make it much easier by just changing the order of things so it seems like they can add numbers in their head much faster when actually they're just making the multiplication for addition simpler. Number two here, I know that two times two is four, so I'm going to multiply 25 times two times two times 74, because I know that this becomes four and 25 times four is 100. 100 times 74 is 7400. Very simple, very quick, really didn't even need paper and pencil. And last but not least, this last problem. I'm going to add the 4.75 to the 1.25 because I know that those are easy to add. And then I'm going to add 295, whoops, 295, not 925, 295, and then my 6. I'll squeeze that in there. 4.75 and $1.25. You want to think of it in terms of money because that makes it easier for most people. And that's going to be 6. And then 6 plus 2.95 is 8.95. 8 and 6 is 14, so this ends up to be 14.95. And you're done. The properties of math are not hard. We just need to learn them so that we can use them and make our lives a little bit more simple.